Good evening, popular astronomers. It is Friday night and time for Pop Astro Live. So I'm just going to play the little intro video while people join the stream. Where's it gone? It's down here on the list. I think it's this one. In fact, do you know what I'll do while people join the stream? I'll play our advert instead. Here we go. When I first started being interested in astronomy, it was just a question of looking up at the night sky, and it is spectacular, even if you don't know what you're looking at. But at some point, very quickly, you decide that you want to know more, and the more you know, the more wonderful it gets. And SPA has been helping people into astronomy to understand what they're looking at more than 50 years. As Brian says, the SPA is a great way to start or accelerate your astronomical adventure. We spoke to our new president, Professor Andrew Coates. Why should people join the SPA? Well, the SPA is really important to join. We have, I mean, it's probably the best society for entry-level astronomers in the UK. And, and the SPA um, gives you so many benefits. I mean, there's, of course, the, the magazine is great for young stargazers. My colleague Lucy um, is the um, chief stargazer. We have a packed section for the junior stargazer. I'm Lucy Green, I'm Chief Stargazer and it's my role to help you all enjoy the fun of astronomy. If you want to make new astro friends, our interactive chat show is the ideal place. Then, then you just float and it is, it's, like, um, it's like that feeling when you're just floating in a pool. There are so many reasons to join the SPA. What will yours be? strongly recommend if you want to learn a bit more you join the SPA or go to website popastro.com I can understand how watching that might be quite confusing because it's a show within a show within a show but this is the real show this is me with my green backdrop this evening and the Purple glitter lipstick. This is the real time show now. Let me open this blooming window. Temperature control is somewhat of an issue in this room. Hi, popular astronomers. Have you missed me? Uh, oh, no, I don't fancy being on a big TV. Oh, Sonia, you'll get used to it. Um, good evening, everybody. The comments are already overwhelming. Good evening. <laughs> Gary and I have the show beamed to the big telly tonight for the first time. How's the camera performing? I hope it's looking good. Please let me know my internet is okay. I've got an alert saying my internet is flaky. Uh, we won't go into detail about why that just pains me. But hopefully it shall hold out throughout the show. Um, hello, Vicky and Cosmo. Looking forward to tonight's show. Hi, Madeline Dan. Clear skies this week. We have got such great clear skies. Have you done some astronomy this week? I'm lagging a bit. Oh, no. Okay, I'll try my best to unlag. Maybe I should speak a couple of into the future. <laughs> right, okay. Housekeeping done. Plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug. Oh, what's that I just saw then? Video is dodgy tonight. No! Oh, you know, that was because every kid between here and Manchester is on the internet um wobbly internet i don't know what to do about this i did a speed test on it um i'm looking very blurry oh my god that's because every child is back on the internet here at the caravan park <sighs> blocky and stuttery oh it just makes me feel ill i don't know what to do about it we've tried we've tried we've upgraded it for for the upgrade and they didn't do it right ah well they did do it right it's just that we've not plugged it in um not able to plug it in so um yeah okay well i'm just gonna carry on then that was not really a lot i can do oh very poor reception well i'm just thinking what i can do it's still a bit okay look i'm just gonna go with it it's okay
Oh, it's still great. I know I accidentally switched it off. <laughs> right, okay. Well, there's that's the first of three bombshells that you're going to get this evening. So first of all, let's do plug the mug. I'll run the plug the mug banner. Where's it gone? Banners. Um, look, the banners look nice. Where's it gone? Uh, you're not in the club if you've not got a mug. So there we go. So I've got a little message for you. I know we've got lots and lots of lovely new people watching the feed and we've got some repeat viewers. Um, if you're watching the show for the third time and you are not a member of the SPA, how about we do a deal? I'm doing this show for free for you and you join the SPA. That would be lovely if you could support us. As it happens, I've just renewed my membership today. It's £20 for the next year. You get the magazine and all the other deals support the show and all of the other volunteers in the show uh, in in the society and once the meetings resume you will have access to those as well what do the comments say here highlight has been bad look good yeah they do don't they it's because they're blimmin high quality please don't use starlink oh you know what it's a, nearly 100 quid a month don't think i'll be doing that um okay so tell us what you have seen in the sky this week. Am I still blurry? Am I still blurry? I'm depressed now. I'm depressed now. Switch it on and off again. Yeah, I did actually just switch it on and off again. I'm overheating now. I've put two jumpers on. How crazy is the weather? Uh, I renewed this week too. Brilliant value money. That is so good. I'm so glad. Right. Okay. Bombshell number one, Vicky's amazing new internet with the root name, key to the universe, because I thought it was going to change my life, is letting me down on a Friday night. And that is not good news. Um, oh, no. I have exhausted my opportunities as to what to do with this internet now. So... Um, we're going to find out how this pans out in the next couple of weeks. Maybe I don't do it on a Friday night when every kid isn't doing TikTok dances between here and Manchester. We've got apologies of absence tonight. I'm so sorry. It's a bit of a cosy, cosy show. We are down to members who we have advertised. Um, if you are a member of the Stuart Clark or Eleni fan club, start crying now. I've had a lovely email off Eleni. She's our news presenter. She said, I'm trying to finish a really hard piece of work for my master's, so I won't be able to present anything or make an appearance tomorrow. I will most likely be at uni until 7.30 or so. I hope you guys understand. And then she's put, hopefully I won't lose my spot. Oh, yeah, because we're really that cutthroat that will get rid of you if you drop one broadcast, Eleni. Of course, we want you back next week. And then she's put, I'm already looking forward to next week. So that was one member down, one crew member down. So, you know, when you're glancing through your emails on your phone and um, stuff doesn't really register, you kind of just scan and make sure it's important. Have you thought about getting a phone hotspot? It's the same, Ian. We've got no 3G here either. Uh, it doesn't work, love. No, no point. So... Stu's email was much more dramatic and I glanced down it and I swear to God, these are the words I picked out of his email. Vicky, right, I'm just going to tell you the words I picked out. Please do not be alarmed. This is not, no, hang on. This is a drill. This is not what it's about. But the words that stood out in Stu's email were work emergency, planetary defense conference and asteroid. How is that going to make you feel? Hey, that is going to terrify you. I was like, oh, my God, what the hell has happened? Stu can't be on the show because of work emergency, planetary defence and asteroid. Let me read you his full email. Vicky, I've got a work emergency. The Planetary Defence Conference has had a speaker drop out and they've offered Asteroid Day a slot. The catch is we have to write and record the talk today. Phew! Is it OK if we slip back a week? Sorry to be a pain. So. It was much of a more, much more mundane than imminent death via asteroid vaporization. So we're safe, everybody. There is no imminent asteroid alert. I just thought there was when I read my email. So on the show tonight, how's my internet? I know she didn't say it was a hard piece of work, did she? I just spread that email before and I had to go back over it to Google and view whether she had actually swore. She did, yes. Very forward, Eleni. 
<laughs> so on the show tonight, Catherine Rayner Evans. She is a fellow of the Royal Astronomical Society and the Royal Geographical Society. She's a member of the European Astronomical Society and Astro Space Stamp Society. She writes articles and interviews for popular astronomy magazines, including BBC Sky at Night and Stanley Gibbons, and is the features editor for the very own popular astronomy magazine. She's co-authoring a first book and has recently had an asteroid named after her. So I would say that Kat makes, she is just so cosmic that she makes me, I consider myself to be fair cosmic, Kat makes me look like somebody who doesn't know the difference between astronomy and astrology. So where's he got his ear? Cosmo, how's the internet? Oh no, just reading Stu's latest trilogy book. Really looking forward to telling you his book. Ah, uh, well, it's on next week, hopefully. If you move, it freezes. It keeps it fine. Okay. Go on, Cosmo. I'll move Cosmo very slowly up. I'm going to guess how Cosmo's been. Okay. Three clues for Cosmo. <laughs> Do you know what? I have got such fidgeting issues that I've brought my fidget ball with me to play with while I'm on air because I fidget so much. Okay. We know the game with Cosmo. He's going to zap off around the universe and we have to guess where he's been. And I'm going to read you out three awesome clues, but you're not allowed to answer until I've read the third clue. Okay. I'm all right tonight. Oh, Jerry, that's really sweet. I'm actually okay. I've padded out, not padded. I, that is completely the wrong word. And thank you for your kind offer, Jerry. To be honest, I'm slightly thrown about having poor internet and I'm wearing a lot of thermal clothes right now and I'm sweating right through them because I don't know what plan. We've done plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. I'm on plan Z and there's no more letters in the alphabet. So we're going to have to find out what happens. Thank you very much. Cosmo, where has he been? Don't answer in the comments until he's given out all of the three clues. They are in really tight. I think I'm shouting. There we go. Okay. It's very, very hot where we are. And we are accelerating to 430,000 miles per hour, which is 0.064% speed of light. So we're getting really quick. We're going what, nearly half a million miles an hour. Oh, my gosh. We are hitching a ride on the closest ever artificial object to the sun. And it's going at nearly half a million miles an hour. That is so quick. And it became the first spacecraft named after a living person. On your marks. Get set, go. Where has Cosmo been riding this week? Robin is working just a bit blurry. Thank you, Robin. Ellie is forgiven. Yeah. Who's going to be the first to answer? We're going at nearly half a million miles an hour. Um, we're on the closest artificial object to the sun. And woo, let's wait for the messages to come in. What do you reckon to that, Cosmo? Can you read on the screen down there? Jerry answered it. But which probe it? Okay, the answers are flooding in. Well done. Jerry, you got it right. Top of the class for you. The Parker Solar Probe. It is a NASA space probe launched in 2018 with a mission of making observations of the outer corona of the sun. It will approach to within 9.86 solar radii. Top points for me using the word radii this evening. Um, from the centre of the sun. And by 2025, will travel at its closest approach as fast as 690 thousand kilometers per hour which is 430,000 miles per hour that is so quick how fast was Oumuamua going is it going faster than Oumuamua I can't remember somebody let me know well done everybody who got right but Jerry Cosmo says well done Cosmo will give you a little kiss mm -hmm. <laughs> okay right sorry about the blurry internet if you're joining us um issues Shoes, shoes. Okay, now on to Catherine Rain. Uh, I'm just going to put Catherine on. <laughs> Hello. Kat, <laughs> problems that I've had with my internet over the past year. We Aww. thought we fixed last week, and 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 it's still bluey. So I'm really annoyed. Okay. But you're up. 
How are you? It's, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Unfortunately, I didn't have a fun excuse not to be here tonight, like asteroids and things like that. So um, I'm just uh. here with my stamps, ready to talk to you all about some exciting philately. So oh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. okay. Excellent. So first of all, well done for making it in front of the camera because we have asked you quite a few times, haven't we? Yeah, it's my first time live on camera and I've been <gasps> putting off for a very, a very long time. So um, I decided to bite the bullet and, uh, and show my face. <laughs> I'm glad you decided to bite the pop astro bullet because it's the most fun bullet of all that you could ever catch in your teeth. Oh, well, you said you were more, I was more cosmic than you, but I don't think that's true. I think you're more cosmic than anyone, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, well, uh, you're certainly a lot, I do a lot more cosmic organisations than me. you members of some good stuff there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, as you mentioned, the Royal Astronomical Society and the Royal Geographical Society. So, yeah, they're amazing um, societies to be part of, you know, and they've, especially with the Royal Astronomical Society, they've helped me a lot in um, supporting me in my astronomy journey and yeah and the other societies the astro space stamp society um I can't, I can't even remember what other societies i'm a member of now the spa <laughs> um so yeah i've i have my fingers in a lot of astro pies <laughs> i suppose yeah whereas i've only got i've only got mine in I'm going to say one or two, really. So, yeah, <laughs> you win. You've got more pie for you. More fingers going under the pies. Thank you. Um, so, thank you. And do you feel nervous right now? Or Yeah, I feel a little bit nervous. And I just want to kind of um, excite people about stamps. And I hope I do a good job of that and, you know, get people into it and kind of uh, get them to understand that stamps are a very exciting part and, uh amazing kind of way of learning about astronomy so well yeah, mr you know. numbers is gobsmacked to learn <laughs> an astro space stamp society there's a society for everything really though isn't there <laughs> yeah there's a whole society dedicated to the collection of um astronomy and space philately so if you if you just google the astro space stamp society you should come across that and you can join it's about oh i can't remember how much it is about 20 quid a year, but we've got members all over the world. Um, right. We have a, a magazine issued every two months, which I have a regular column in called Cats Adventures and Astro Philately. Um, and yes, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Amazing kind of place to find out about new stamps that are coming out or, um, you know, uh, commemorations and celebrations, anniversaries. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Well, now, is it philately or philately? I say philately. I'm, okay. I don't know the right and wrong way of saying it, but yeah, I say philately. No, no, I'm just making sure because my first question is, what is philately and how long have you been interested in it? <laughs> okay, um, so philately is the study of postage stamps and postal history, but it also refers to the collection, appreciation and um, research activities on stamps and other philatelic material. So you have um, Cinderella stamps. So these are stamps that look like a postage stamp, but they're not issued for postal purposes by a government postal administration. Um, you have poster stamps. Some people are interested in air mail. So obviously that's mail that's been flown in the air. Um, sea mail, so mail that's been on boats. And even space mail, which is called astrophilately. Um, and that is mail that has actually flown in space and often made it to the surface of the moon. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, a lot of the Apollo missions, actually, they would uh, take, they're called first day covers. So it'd be an envelope with a stamp affixed to uh, the, the envelope. And the astronauts would actually take them aboard and put them in their spacesuits and take them onto the surface of the moon. So, yeah, they're really sought after um, pieces of material. Um, wow, did they sneak, did they sneak <clears throat> some um, letters or stamps to the moon that they shouldn't have? Yes, that was the Apollo 15 scandal, um, which is quite notorious amongst astrophilatelists and probably um, people who are interested in, in space in general. So um, the crew of Apollo 15, so that was Al Warden, uh, David R. Scott and James B. Irwin, they'd agreed to carry some unauthorised postmarked covers aboard the spacecraft and onto the surface of the moon. And upon the astronauts return, these covers were then postmarked um, again 
on the recovery ship called the Okinawa. And Herman Seeger, who was a German stamp dealer involved in the plan, sold some of these covers for prices in the thousands. But NASA didn't know that this was happening. Um, so when NASA found out about that, the astronauts were reprimanded and forbidden to fly in space again. Oh, so, yeah. whoa! Now, are they <laughs> um, very valuable? I bet they're really valuable stamps now, are they? Yeah, they're worth thousands. So if you ever see a Apollo 15 cover that's been signed by all three astronauts in a antique shop or on eBay for a couple of quid, I'd recommend buying it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, you know, it's a really kind of interesting piece of Apollo history, I think. Um, so yeah, you know, people will collect first day covers. Um, so these are postage stamps or, um, yeah, a postage stamp or stamps that are kind of affixed to an envelope and they've been franked on the first day that the stamp or the stamps were authorised for use. And they're often affixed to a specially designed envelope um, with a, you know, with a theme that's being celebrated. So I've got an example here. I don't know if you can see it. Let's so this is a really cool screen. Did you see? So yeah, this is a really cool example. Um, the first day cover, um, you can see it's a black envelope and it's celebrating the 1999 solar eclipse, um, which was seen I think the full eclipse is only seen in Cornwall. But yeah, you've got some the stamps here affixed to the envelope and there's a there'll be a postmark on here, but you can't see it. And obviously we've got the illustration here. <laughs> it's backwards. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> um uh which shows the um an image of a solar eclipse. So yeah, that you know that I I find them very interesting to collect and um they, they often form a huge part of a uh stamp collector's collection as well. And yeah, you've got presentation packs, um, post office headquarter cards. So yeah, the list is absolutely endless in stamp collecting, really. Wow, so, how yeah. many stamps do you reckon you've got? Um, individual stamps, I'm not entirely sure. Probably a good maybe five, six hundred. But my interest is mainly in, in these covers because you can learn a lot from them. Um, mm -hmm. And also they're a lot easier to kind of um, store away in an album. And not faff around with <laughs> with the individual stamps but yeah I, you know I do collect both it just depends what I'm interested in. So the, the, the sets of stamps amazingly creative little gateways into the world of space and astronomy mm -hmm. and you you say you can learn so much so how does that work then? Yeah so um, it's actually a really creative and fun way to to teach and learn about all three subjects. So obviously learning about astronomy, space, and the hobby of stamp collecting. And that's what I aim to show people through my presentations that I recently started doing. Um, so, you know, fr from the stamps and the covers, you can learn about the history of astronomy and space. You can learn about the science, the culture, the people, observations, um, special events, key dates, and you can even learn about politics from an astronomy cover. So, for example, um, the space race during the Cold War. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really interesting. And, you know, a lot of branches of astronomy and space that, that you can learn from. Kind of... It's also, um, you know, if it's raining outside, it's a cold, wet December evening, you can't get outside and look at the stars. You can kind of stare upon the wonders of the universe as well from from the comfort of your sofa. It's uh, yeah, it's really it's really Aww. cool. <laughs> and the, so, you know, been um, so many topics. Don't. Sorry, I was just going to say yeah that you know there's been so many topics um, of astronomy and space that have been celebrated um, and commemorated on stamps. So you've got animals in space, the Apollo missions, as I mentioned earlier, astronauts, planets, nebulas, constellations. Um, comets it's there's just so much and you're kind of always continually um learning so and researching and that is the whole point i think of of collecting stamps really it's it's fantastic Yay. Also have an exam no. another example oh, actually yes, of that please. sorry On full screen yeah um, <laughs> so yeah so this is just an example of like how much you can learn from a first day cover 
Um, so this is a first day cover that was issued in 2016, I think it was. Um, and it commemorates the cent uh, the 100th anniversary of general relativity. And this was issued in the Isle of Man. So you can see all six stamps here um, and they're displaying some of the equations over the past century that have kind of led to significant scientific discoveries and in turn have had a profound impact on the world. And you can't see it, but there's a postmark here telling us the date the stamps were issued and an illustration on the bottom left telling us what the stamps were issued for. And this cover has been signed by Kip Thorne and um, Professor Bernard Shutt. So I think it's a really interesting example of, of what we can learn, you know, the who, the what, the why. And if I was to give this cover to a budding astronomer who was really interested in cosmology, you know, they, they could go away and research so much from this one piece of paper. You know, they'd be like, well, who was Albert Einstein? Who was Hawking? What's a gravitational wave? What's star miss? What's general relativity? And, you know, who's Kip Thorne? Who's Bernard Chutt? So, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of fantastic information here. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I use that example in, in my presentations because it, it's a great way of illustrating that, you know. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> so, um, how far back in history do astronomy stamps go then? Um, okay, so, well, the first adhesive postage stamp was issued in Great Britain in 1840, and I'm sure a lot of you will know that that was the penny black. And three years later, Brazil issued their first ad adhesive um, postage stamp in 1843. And they were actually the first country to issue the first stamp with an astronomical theme in 1887. It's a very kind of underwhelming looking stamp. It's small and it's pale blue and cream in colour. But the astronomical theme comes from um, the illustration of Crux Australis, which is a southern cross. And this asterism actually appeared on Brazilian postage stamps for around 10 years. And the asterism is a really symbolic part of um, of Brazilian history. You know, it appears on the Brazilian flag and it's just, um, you know, a huge influence in their culture. Uh -huh. um, and of course, you know, Brazil has a huge navigational history and um, just like the pole star in the northern hemisphere, which points the way north, um, the Southern Cross, the Crux Australis, points the way to the South Celestial Pole. So, you know, it is understandable that they would choose to feature that asterism um, on oh, their stamp. Oh, nice. So, yeah, um, Brazil actually issued the first stamp depicting a planet. I can't remember what year that was. 1890, maybe. Um, and, yeah, that depicts Venus. So Brazil has a huge um, involved history in, in, in using astronomical symbols uh, on their postage stamps. And, uh, yeah, the UK was a bit slow, though. We didn't start celebrating astronomy on stamps until 1966, I think it was. So oh, Brazil were way, <laughs> way ahead of the times. Um, but, yeah, it's fantastic. And, again, you know, just learning so much about the history of Brazil through one stamp um, because of the astronomical theme. It's fantastic. Blime, that's so good. That's so good. And Martin, yeah. you've just encouraging him to splash out. He's just been encouraged to buy the Jocelyn Bell Bell oh. sign, Visions of the Universe, first day cover. Have you got it, Kat? Do you know what? I actually I actually contacted Jocelyn Bell Burnell off the off chance off the off chance. Um I'm I'm not one to shy away from asking people things you know you don't ask you don't get and I actually emailed her and I said if I send you this first day cover will you sign it for me and she said yeah so oh. I I sent my visions of the universe cover off and um she very kindly sent it back and David Attenborough I know he's got nothing oh. to do with astronomy um I contacted him last summer and he um autographed one of the a dine a cover I have celebrating paleontology I think it was the dinosaurs um and he very kindly signed two for me and sent them back so yeah it's amazing and it's again you know to have Jocelyn Bell Burnell's autograph on a first day cover you know uh it, it's a fantastic piece of history to own um and, and to keep in your collection and just treasure it I think it's it's brilliant 
Oh, you must have some lovely stuff. Well, I didn't know a single thing about stamps except I will frequently rip the perforations. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is it, I think. And that's all I know. There's a huge, I don't know if stigma is the right word, but a lot of people associate stamp collecting with like the older generation. They think it's boring, you know, something you do when you're retired. But I really don't think people kind of take the time to to just sit down and look at a stamp and think wow yeah you know this is this is fantastic and, and now especially with the designs that come out on stamps it's a great way of learning and um are there any spacey example. stamps are there any spacey stamps out at the minute that we could get um so there's one coming out a set coming out this year in america celebrating solar science i'm not sure um which month they're coming out but they look fantastic so I think they're a set of 10, um, but you can go on the United States Postal Service website and, and order some or go on eBay and have a look. Um, but yeah, the last time the UK issued some astronomy theme stamps was last year for the Visions of the Universe um, set, which celebrated the bicentenary of the Royal Astronomical Society. So, yeah, I've got some here, actually. Um, another yeah. great <laughs> example of... Uh, stamps you know teaching us and and kind of you know making us want to learn more so this is what you call a presentation pack um so these are loose stamps in a plastic like a little plastic folder if you like and you can unfold it um and it'll give you information about each stamp you know what's gravitational lensing uh what's comet 67p and what's the cat's eye nebula so yeah you know you, you can learn a lot about astronomy without opening a book um or going on the internet and it's all just contained here because of these beautiful little pieces of paper so uh, yeah stamps are cool stamps are amazing <laughs> here we go so mr numbers um is his name odd or even so what's the best way for a starter to get into things like the Soviet Eastern Bloc space race stamps? That's a I, mean, I think that might okay. be one of the most niche, niche questions we've ever had asked on the show. So well done, Mr. <laughs> Odd and Even Numbers. He's going to love this, OK, because I, I, brought, I bought this two weeks ago and it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, it's a whole book dedicated to the race to the moon through philately. Oh, wow. Um, by a guy called Umberto Cavallaro. Um, and he, yeah, he's chronicled the space race basically um, from Sputnik all the way up to the Apollo 15 scandal. Um, so I can't remember how much I paid for it. It's about 20 quid I got on Amazon. Amazing book. Um, but in terms of starting to collect stamps, you know, there's a lot of brilliant websites out there. You could look at eBay, for example, is a good starting point. Um, there's one called Dell Camp or Colnect, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, just do some searches on auction websites and and see what's out there. Or the Astro Space Stamp Society, they have a lot of knowledgeable people. Um, so yeah, just just get digging around, and you won't be disappointed because there's thousands. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for opening my eyes to a hobby that I didn't even really know a single thing about <laughs> or didn't know existed. Mr. Numbers is giving you a thumbs up, so there we go. Thank Aww, you, Mr. Numbers. Um, okay, then, so on to the fact that you're very proactive in the society. Tell us a little more about how long you've been a member for and what you've got from the society and how you help. Okay, so gosh, how long have I been a member? I'm not even sure, to be honest. Not that long. I've just only been a book. I'm on my second year a... today. How many years? Second, because I've just renewed second. today for oh. the second time. So I'm a, oh, well a whippersnapper. <laughs> I think I'm a bit longer, maybe four or five. I'm not entirely sure. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I was rec up until recently the features editor for the magazine. Um, I've had to pull back a little bit because obviously I have a day job and, and, and my other writing. So I was finding it quite a lot of work. But um, it's been absolutely amazing uh, being a part of Popular Astronomy magazine because, you know, I was kind of thrown at the deep end. I had no previous experience of editing and, um, you know, working on a magazine and I love it. 
you know, something I would love to do more of in the future. So yeah, I, I've learned a lot of excellent communication skills. I've met a lot of amazing people. Um, and, you know, the magazines, I think, are just bursting full of information. It's, it's, uh, it's a vibrant magazine, I think, you know, covers a lot of topics and, and I hope interests everyone. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been fantastic to be part of recently. It's been really good. Oh, that lovely cat. I think vibrant and alive is a great way to describe the magazine because it just has so many different type of articles and contributions from it in a way that I've never seen any astro or science magazine like it. So yes, it's a great publication. Yeah. Are we are we still looking for an editor? Probably. Yeah. So um, Paul Robin, I think he's he's been doing an amazing job overseeing well, everything, and you know he's been doing a lot of work and. Um, you know, he does have a team of people behind him, um, but we are certainly still on the lookout for um, someone to take that role up full time. But yeah, I, I, I would say if anyone's listening to this who is a student at university and wants to get into journalism, you know, or media, that this is an absolutely fantastic opp opportunity to to get some experience because friendly bunch something interesting learning something new it's uh, it's brilliant cat i tell you obviously your comments belies the fact that you've never done this before you've come across absolutely brilliantly and i hope you have many many more excellent live videos to come in the future thank you everyone for all of your great comments for cat thank you so much for having me i just uh I am doing 11 presentations this year, guys, so if, just look me up on the internet and <laughs> I hope you can come along to one and I, I can, you know, I've got an hour-long presentation on astronomy and philately and I look at everything from comets to, yeah, a man landing on the moon. So um, I I hope you, you can come along to one one day. Great. <laughs> and Riley's World says, hello, really enjoying the show. That's good. Uh, Riley, I don't recognise your handle. Apologies, we've got um, glitchy internet tonight. Heads are going to roll. Maybe Cosmo's <laughs> head. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> don't do that I'll on just, there. <laughs> I'll just guillotine him for the hell of it. Take out some stress. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Kat. Oh, hang on. Let's have a look. Uh, Sandra says, thank you, Catherine. That was so interesting. Bob oh, says, you. many thanks. Wendy says, Thank you, Catherine. Great to see you on here. Oh, hi, Wendy. Robin says, thanks, Kat. Hi, nice to see you again. They'll be throwing you flowers before you know it. Oh, yeah. I know. Can we have a... <laughs> Colin says, can we have a damp article in the mag? Well, funny enough, um, a lady called Margaret Morris has written one. It's quite short, unfortunately. I was hoping she would manage, she would expand a lot more on the subject. Um, but she's an amazing woman. She's 90 this year. Oh. And she has a huge history of astronomy and philately. She's won a lot of awards for her stamp displays. Um, and she's written a really interesting paper. If you Google Margaret Morris Astronomy and Philately, you can download it for free. Um, and I actually talk about her in my presentations. And um, yeah, she, she's brilliant. So I think that article will be out in November, maybe. But um, yeah, it's, it's something um, that maybe we can look at again, maybe next year and expand on a topic or something. So yeah, there are, there is an article coming. <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. And hopefully I will get to see you at a real life event, IRL as they call it, Earl, in real life. <laughs> yes, that'd be great. Yeah, it'd be good to meet everyone. I've, you know, um, I was hoping to meet a lot of people last year and you know, I haven't really met that many people apart from Pete Williamson and Nick Howes and Andy Burns. I, I haven't met, you know, you, um, Stuart Atkinson. There's there's loads of people, Calf, Calf Adams and, oh. yeah, and the McIntyres. Oh, the McIntyres, <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So it, yeah. it'll be really great to see it hopefully next year at one big event. Oh, I'm sure we'll see you soon. Hang on, what's this say? I know Margaret, she's ex-president of the Glasgow oh. Society. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's fantastic. Very interesting woman. Um, and yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to meet her one day and talk about stamps. <laughs> oh, there you go. They're loving you tonight, Catherine. I'll see Aww. you soon, love. Oh. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well done. Well done. <laughs> bye. 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 E, I remember in the days of yore when I used to have three guests on here in one hour. How did I ever do that? Look, I wipe my teeth tonight. They look good, don't they? Let's have a look. I've got a big light on in front of me, so uh, 
Are they glowing up? Nice. That's nice, isn't it? Very good. Very good. Thank you for all of your lovely comments and questions. Now then, banish a lav up. Stamps and stem special. Can I check? How's my internet? I'm concerned. Don't know what to do now. Right. Okay. Um, I am now going to go on to, need some kind of fanfare, Space Pet of the Week. We might need to work on that musical arrangement. Better now. Thank you. I'm keeping much more stiller. -er. So, we, it's okay. That's what I need to hear. Not too bad. Oh, do you know what I've done? I've not got the email address. Robin, what's the email address for um, Space Pet of the Week? You sent it to me in my email. I don't fancy going fishing in my email. Can you let me know what it is, please? Because um, we've now got... Yours is still the same. Catherine's is much... Ah! Okay, right. Still wobbly. Not too bad. Okay. Okay, Space Pet of the Week. What we had? We had a dog last week called Astro. This week, we've had a lovely email from Kathy Grimes. Yeah. So listen to this lovely email that she sent. Dear Vicky, in your last Pop Astro Live, you wanted people to send in photographs of cosmic pets. Cosmo is little ears. Does Sloth have ears? He hasn't got any ears, but I assume he can hear. Um, he gets excited to meet fellow animals. Please find attached photograph of my two ragdoll cats. Wolfric is on the left and Freya is on the right. Are you ready to see them? This is just lovely. Let me switch off all these banners. Let's have a look. Okay. Banners, banners, banners. Banners. The banners are a big bunch of spanners. Um, okay, here we go. Right, I'm going to do a screen share. Hang on a minute. Oh, no. This is where it trips me up, everybody. Oh, I don't... Oh, no. Oh, Sonia, I'm going to do you first and then show the pictures of the cat because I can only do one screen share and I've got your presentation lined up. Ah! Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, here she is. How are you? Yay! I was hoping to could bring you a live moon tonight, but I've got the uh, got the east, which is like no clouds in the sky, and I've got the west where the moon is, and it's absolutely cloudy. So I was hoping oh, to bring you a moon, but I have no moon. I'm so sorry. Where is it? If there was it's, a moon, where um, would it be? I've not looked for it. It would be in the west. Um, I think oh, it sets it. about 10 o'clock. Do you I have the moon? the moon? I, had, I don't have the moon. I have the moon. I do have the moon. I tell Porkies I have the moon. Oh, well done. <laughs> if, you want to do, if you want to do a screenshot, okay, and then I can get the telescope set up. Go on then, yeah, let me do. I'll entertain the troops on you. <laughs> what I like. Right, okay. Right, I'll, I'll um, let Sonia do that. Right, okay, let me, um, oh, here we go. Love doing a bit of live IT on the air. Let's remove Sonia. I'm going to try and show the cat now. So, um, oh, how's this going to work? Oh, hang on a minute. Right, okay, I'll ditch that. Oh, this is going to make life really difficult. I know it is. Right, screen share. Share screen. Chrome tab. We're going to show you the cats at the expense of Sonia's slideshow. Look at these things. They're grumpy cats. They're beautiful. Let me tell you the story of the putty tats. Um, dear Vicky, in your last Pop Astro show, thank you, Kathy Grimes, for the cats, you wanted people to send in photographs of cosmic pets. Please find the attached photograph of my two ragdoll cats. Wolfric is on the left and Freya is on the right. So Wolfric left, Freya on the right. They are lying around my portable astrophotography rig that uses a red cat telescope. They look like little astronomers, says Kathy. They are named after characters in the film Outlander that is about Norway in the Viking era. So they are my two little Vikings. That is so cute. In 1976, two Viking landers landed on Mars to search for life. There are other cosmic connections. There is a very large main belt asteroid called 76 Freya. The space flight simulation game Elite Dangerous has a nebula called the Wolfric Nebula. You've thought that one through, haven't you? Kind as regards, Kathy Grimes. How gorgeous is that? <laughs> so, if you want your pets to be on Astronomy Pet of the Week. Oh, Liam's on. Hi, Liam. Uh, I'll come to you in a minute. Um, you can email me at competition at popastro.com. Send me your animals. Um, 
uh, Paul Sutherland suggested Robin enter pictures of his cats, which have all got, I think one might be called Chris Lintop, um, and um, they've all died, I think. Is that what you told me, Robin? <laughs> It's got what are they called Kepler and Tycho and Chris Lintot the cat. Um, so thank you. They are lovely, aren't they? They are grumpy cat cats, from what I can work out. Uh, let's see what the audience cat cute cats top of the staircase though. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right where you want your cat to be. And the big ball of telescope wires is the telescope a cat de <laughs> Um, thank you very, very much. Very good. Um, so very gorgeous looking cats. Yes, they are beautiful, aren't they? Let the cats bask in the adulation from the digital crowd. Right, we've got Sonia back. Let me get rid of the cats. Let's have a look. How's it going, Sonia? There we go. We have a live moon. Yay! Well done, Sonia. That's really nice, actually. Let's go full screen. Yeah, look at that. Lovely Terminator there. Very, very sharp. I don't know what phase that would be. Mm, I'm going to say it looks about 30% um, 30 30 full. How's that for you, Sonia? What are we looking through? What's your, what's your kit, Sonia? Um, so I have a Skywatcher 10-inch um, Dobsonian. Right. And is that just your, fo your phone at the eyepiece? So that's just, yeah, so that's just literally... My phone at the IP store again. If I do that, you might have to see a few craters on the moon. Yeah, we've been enjoying your pictures, Sonia. Well done. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, Sonia. So right, we'll go to we go. your. Yeah, thank oh, you. So there we go. Very spontaneous. Very lovely and spontaneous. Now I've got to dig your blooming <laughs> slideshow out now, Sonia, because we have in the past couple of weeks had some incredible clouds, haven't we? You still there? Oh, she's gone. St oh, I'm gone. Oh, Sonia's gone. Great. What else can go wrong? Ceiling might fall down. Meteorite might wallop through the roof. <laughs> Sonia's gone. Let's just let Sonia reconnect. Um, yeah, we have had, here she's back. We have had some incredible clouds over the past couple of days. All these amazing. Was it last week when it was snowing? Did you get to see some of the snow clouds, some of the pictures of the snow clouds? They were absolutely some of the most malevolent looking clouds I've ever seen. These huge turbulent anvil heads all splaying out across the top of the atmosphere with the kind of leading edge of mammoths at the back. I'm a bit of a cloud geek, actually. And so what I was doing was wondering how big a cloud is, how much a cloud weighs, and it gave Sonia the idea for her presentation. So let me just get her um, presentation out. Diddly dee, load it into Google, diddly. Tell you what, all of the things that happen on this show is so completely prepping me for when I do big, um, big live shows for clients. <laughs> That's what I keep on saying to myself. I go like, why did it go wrong tonight? And I take solace in the fact that all these glitches are helping me cut my teeth for when I'm doing it for CERN or something like that or on the sky at night. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's get Sonia back on. <laughs> I couldn't get myself back on. I was like, oh no, and that looked really big. And I know Wendy's got this big screen on tonight. So I thought I'm trying to get myself smaller and it just didn't work. <laughs> uh, right. Let me um let me stop screen. Right, let me get rid of that. Right, that one's gone. Now I'm gonna do this screen share. I'm surprised I don't have nightmares about trying to share screens in my sleep. Share screen. Sonia, why are you doing as a cloud presentation? Oh, she's not gone again, has she? No? no, no Why I'm are you here. doing a cloud presentation? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Why oh. um, are you giving a cloud presentation? You're right, Dick, because when you did your um, live on uh, Facebook and you was like, I wonder how much a cloud weighs, and I thought, do you know what? That gives me a really good um, presentation, too, of all about clouds. I don't know everything about clouds. It's just like the basic things. But then, you know, what's the harm of just doing a bit of basic? <laughs> so right, it's okay. all about clouds and fluffy little clouds. There was white clouds in the sky. Go on so then. I say, say it. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, there we go. So we'll start off with what are clouds made of? So the largely um, collection of tiny water droplets, or they can be frozen ice, depending on um, the layers of cloud and where they are in the atmosphere. The higher the cloud is, it's going to be more of a frozen water droplet. And then the lower the cloud is in the atmosphere, it'll be a rain droplet. And they are that's how that's how clouds float as well because of how light that rain cloud is in the water droplets and um, however that will come on the next slide however i thought this might be of interest uh, to you as well vicky the next slide um, of okay. how heavy are clouds 100 elephants mm -hmm. so according to scientists all the light and fluffy looking clouds we see in the sky actually weigh millions of pounds no really wow <laughs> The water droplets inside can weigh more than 500 tonnes, which is equivalent of 100 elephants, but they are able to float because the air below them is even heavier. And when I've had a little um, research, a droplet in a cloud, an individual drop can be at least 10 to 1,000 times smaller than an actual raindrop. So it's like a size of a micron. It's so, so small that water droplet in that cloud. Sorry, I've got my mouth hanging open here, right? So like a <laughs> light and fluffy cloud, because Anglesey gets these little popcorn clouds that I love so much, and now I've got to know they weigh 100 elephants, just one of them. 100 elephants, just that one cloud can weigh more than 500 tonnes. And they are they're made of like millions and millions of um, water droplets, but the water droplets in that cloud... A ten to thousand times so they're up so so they're like a micron they're so so tiny compared to a water droplet that falls from the cloud and because of how small that water that droplet is in that cloud compared to water droplets of how long it takes it would take more than 10 hours for that little tiny micron if it was to fall from that cloud to reach to reach us on earth on, on ground right <laughs> <laughs> right that the 100 elephants i need to remember that there's 100 elephants above your head there's that's crazy elephants in that one cloud above you wow right okay so should i do the next slide let's slide yes so how do the clouds float so as we all know the especially in the summertime as the as the hot as we get the hot air the hot air rises and we get this bubbling um clouds in the sky and then it cools and condensates into water droplets which form that cloud so all those little water droplets and nickel micron water drops all coming together to form one big cloud and as long as the cloud in the air that's it's made of it's warmer than the outside air around it floats so the clouds warm and then the outside air around it, as, cold and gone, cold, as long as the cloud in the air that it's made of is warmer, then the outside air around it floats. So there we go. So as that cloud is cold, as long as all the warm air below the warm air below it is still warm, then that's what keeps the cloud afloat. So the, the cloud's cold, the air's warm. <laughs> it's so confusing that bit. <laughs> 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 I've nice probably seen that so many times in my head to try. <laughs> yeah. So right. next cloud. Next cloud. Next, next cloud. <laughs> <laughs> dear me. Next slide. <laughs> oh dear me. So as we know, there are so many types of clouds out there, and there are so many levels. Um, and you have the low, the medium, and the high. So you get the I'll go with like the cute cumulus clouds. So that starts on the low. <laughs> But as when the summer comes, you'll notice we have these tall cumulonimbus clouds. I like to call them cauliflower clouds because of how the heads look like very cauliflowery, and I can never say that word, or CBs. And that's how they turn into the summer. So we have the cumulus clouds, the hot air rises even more, and it's they have less stability in the air with that huge hu humidity, which forms that really big cumulus cumulonimbus cloud which give us those thunderstorms. And then we have like the cirrus and the cirrus cumulus right on the top of the cloud, or right on the high. The middle have the nimbus stratus, the outer stratus, the outer cumulus, and the low we have the stratus, the stratocumulus, and then the cumulus. 
Um, so they can, the clouds form convection currents, they form from warm air rising, specifically over the mountains, known as the orographic lifting, which is also known as the water cycle. And then we have clouds can form when warm and air cold air masses meet, such as when you have a warm air mass and a cold air mass. That's when we get more clouds and we get more instability and we have more rain. Remember that clouds are formed from a combination of the elephant's hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's an easy way to remember it thank you yes yes and, and that's Mr. why Sutherland. <laughs> well, just, well, I, that's paul been commenting tonight paul Sutherland, the pithy comments um i don't think i've I, seen I any of that, you I this think evening that's the first paul. time i've seen him with, with his pithy comments tonight <laughs> <laughs> yes we've, we've missed you paul come back soon <laughs> <laughs> and that's why sometimes so, we see clouds on different levels move different directions because of the how high they are compared to our um the wind speeds and where those wind speeds are going they either go left or they go right but most of the cumulus clouds if you notice a cumulus cloud it'll be going in the right direction of what the wind will be so the cumulus clouds can always can always tell us which direction the wind is or which way it's going Next cloud, next. Oh, I'm saying next cloud again. <laughs> next slide, please. I think you should. Well, if you do astronomy, it does tend to be the next cloud, doesn't it? Right, it here does, we go. Yeah. Next cloud. There we go. <laughs> next cloud. <laughs> so we mostly know three main types of clouds. So we've got the cirrus clouds, the little nice wispy clouds made of ice, and usually these predict fair weather. So if you see these, you know it's going to be nice weather coming or nice weather the next day, and they can change occur within 24 hours. The oh. stratus clouds, these are used the grey clouds that often cover the entire sky and it looks like, you know, fog wouldn't reach a cloud and it can sometimes produce light rain or drizzle. So it's just one big cloud that covers the entire sky. We then have the cumulus clouds. These are my favourite clouds. Little, cluffy, little fluffy white clouds that look like cotton at the um, top and rounded at the bottom. And these are they the ones that are upwards. 500? Uh, have they got 100 elephants in the cumulus? These are the ones that have got 500 elephants in them, yes. And these ones mostly develop um, into the big CB clouds um, in the summertime that give us those thunderstorms. Next slide, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was watching uh, my we words. <laughs> 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 so why do clouds appear white so when you add all the colors of the rainbow you've got your red your purple your pink your green whatever's in the rainbow colors it all makes the color white and then the clouds reflect all the colors of the light from the sun equally to make them look white and that when is the clouds amazing aren't thick <laughs> and then when the clouds aren't thick enough and you've got like the stratus clouds and the, car, and the sun can't quite get through it and need to look grey. So when we see a grey cloud, it might not necessarily be, be that it's going to rain or it's going to be stormy. It's just literally the sun can't get through it because the cloud is so thick and that's why it's a grey cloud. There we go. So how, don't, don't love judge all grey clouds. I would love to know how many popular astronomers knew that clouds are white because they reflect every colour of the rainbow. Well, that that is white in essence. But yeah, I never really thought of it like that. That's so nice. <laughs> oh, that's such a such a lovely description, Sonia. And what a gorgeous presentation! Your PowerPoint skills are lit. I love doing PowerPoint. I love doing PowerPoint presentations. I could live doing PowerPoint presentations. I really, really could. Really, I swear to God, I can't even draw a box on PowerPoint. So I'll be emailing you my um, my words, and you can be email them. your emails to me, and I'll, I'll wish you up a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, we should do them on offer them on Fiverr or one of those um, freelance sites, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> are we ready so, for the next page yet there we yes go. we are ready for the very very final slide so why are clouds important so they help to regulate the earth's balance of energy as they reflect and scatter solar radiation and they observe earth's infrared energy um and they, they, they produce our precipitation for us the rain the snow and they are essential for the part of the hydrologic cycle also known as the water cycle and then the clouds indicate what time of pressure it is, especially for weather forecasters occurring, for instance, as I say, cumulus clouds indicate surface heating and atmospheric turbulence, especially in the summertime, especially um, if you look at a live radar. 
and you'll see a lot of clouds, especially the cumulus clouds. And then later on in the afternoon, evening, you'll 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 look at a lot of radar and you'll see that bumpiness. And that's the the, the CB clouds that have developed. So if, if I'll, I'll, when cause I'll, I'll show it when I um, when summer comes and I have a lot because I pay for a live radar app and it shows the cloud what's across the country and you can see these little bumps which are the CB clouds that are potentially thunderstorm clouds later on in the in the night and evening I quite like looking at those it's quite interesting how they look on the map those clouds and they help to read this. I was going to say that is your best presentation yet. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic, visually beautiful, incredibly um, educational, and the way that you talk through it. There is, you are the person who is opposite of death by PowerPoint because I've got issues. <laughs> I have issues with a lot of PowerPoint, but yours are just completely riveting and beautiful <laughs> and hilarious and excellent. <laughs> and then you know everyone should know the water cycle, so you know it goes up, it goes. The, is it the the down the lake in down the mountain into the lake, or is it the opposite way round? Where it goes down the, lake the mountain and then into the lake. Up the lake, and then it evaporates, then up to the clouds, into the lake. And I'm sure I heard somewhere that the the rain that we get is actually then from that whatever lake it came from. I don't know if that's true or not. That that's what I heard ages ago, really? and it's just stuck with me. That that Pacific rain cloud. Had, is the water droplets from a lake apparently of when the water of how the water cycle works and it evaporates into the clouds i don't wow, know wow that's true that's or not. Well, no idea if that's true or not out. but i do i remember that oh ages and ages ago of when i heard that so i need to actually see if that is true oh we need to put a radio collar on a raindrop and find out sonia yes we do definitely <laughs> Which it, which I thought because of doing clouds, it bring me nicely into the weather forecast afterwards. Then, um, yeah, it is looking extremely, extremely good at the moment as well. There's no rain forecast for at least the next three or four days. I think it's about Tuesday. We will see some rain, and tonight is looking extremely good. And now I've got some clouds which is starting to disappear at the moment, which will be much of the UK tonight, which will be having extremely good clear sky tonight for large parts of the UK. It may just take a lot longer over Wales, southwest Wales, and maybe central England going down to the Cornwall. But the rest of the UK, Scotland, um, Eastern Ireland, are looking extremely, extremely clear tonight as well. And that and moon then, is setting. The moon is setting, isn't it, right now? So what setting. a great night. It's about you. 10 o'clock. Or is it a bit late? It looks a bit later tonight. I'm not sure. It's still quite late moon um the same tomorrow the, the, cl the clouds will bubble up during the day but then by the night time it does look again and really nice clear night tonight maybe it more northern england may just see that hold on to that cloud and a bit of wales but again scotland much of the uk larger clear tomorrow night really good the same on sunday it's at by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, a really large clear night again tomorrow night. But because of those clear skies, we are going to see those temperatures drop, especially peak districts, um, Scotland, um, those rural areas at least going to do like minus three, minus four with a frost. And so at dew point, this will really drop. So please be careful of those telescopes if you are intending to even do imaging um, through the night with these clear skies those um, temperatures are going to drop. And that jet stream, let me check on, I've not checked on that jet stream just yet. We still have it below the UK, which is really good. And we still have that high pressure above the UK as well. That's why we're not really getting any much air masses come through. Because it's high, this high pressure just sat on top of the UK at the moment. And it's stopping. We've got a little, little area of um, rain which is um, to the west of Ireland but because of this um, high pressure at the moment that's on top it is stopping that rain from coming across to us so we are doing really well at the moment as I say it's looking probably um, late Tuesday into Wednesday night and then it's looking quite good again this week we can see temperatures on the rise during the day but then it is looking to be cold again but as I say the next few nights definitely get the scopes out and do your imaging because it does look really good at the moment for everybody oh, beautiful Sonia this is the first time in like the past six weeks that we've had I think you've delivered a hopeful forecast I know I think you were saying yesterday since I've 
been <laughs> since I've been forecasting that jet stream. <laughs> oh, Sonia, you have a lovely weekend. Maybe we'll chat oh, over the weekend. Oh, you too, and, and, and thank you everyone so else much. as well. Have a great, great night as well of imaging. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Cosmo says he loves you. Oh, me too, is here as well. Hi, <laughs> 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 Oh, Ooh. next thing you know, they'll be making monkey sloth embryos, Sonia. Oh, so keep them yes. away from each and, other. Uh, just to plug the book, a really good oh, book. Lovely. If you want to really get into clouds, I've had this for a long, long time. Now it tells you about every single cloud, all the different characters in the clouds, and oh, it's just it's just a really good book to read. That one. There we yes, go. I'm gonna do. I'm have... gonna do a. a um, I'm going to do a presentation just on books. As I think I have a whole library of nothing but books upstairs. I'm not allowed to buy any more. Apparently, I'm banned from buying any more books. You've got a fan here. Michael says Sonia is the best. Don't we just know it? Oh, hi, Mike. He lives just up the road from me, so he should <laughs> see that moon now, the same as me. He should have those clear skies as well, hopefully. <laughs> He's saying hi from Staley Vegas. <laughs> yes, yeah, Staley Vegas. Yes, definitely. Just up the road. I think it's like 15, 20 minute drive from where I am. So uh, hopefully if I forecast the clear skies in the cloud, he should have that down the road as well. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet, Son. You have a beautiful weekend, okay? Oh, you too as well, Vicky. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. bye. Oh, cut her off right in the prime. Sorry, Sonia. See you soon. Oh, my God. She breathes such a wonderful breath of fresh air into the SPA and into the show and definitely into PowerPoint. How good are our PowerPoints? Right. I've got a couple of things to show you before I disappear off. Um, do -do 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 -do. Okay. So I think I've done everything. I think I've got – let me just check my to-do list. Uh, play membership video. Yeah, done, 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 done. Cosmo's done his bit. We've got Stu Clark on next week. That is great. He has been on with us multiple times now. He's just so lovely. I decided today he's the Garfield cat of astronomy. He's just like so chilled out and like, yeah, yeah, but so knowledgeable, brilliant. And it's even better because I've got a nickname for him. I've been calling him Stupanova. So hopefully that'll stick. Work the, work the nickname and it'll stick. Thank you, Sonia. Clear and bright as always. If you had a headphone mic would hear you when you look out the window or when walk about love your midweek updates they are really good sonia does the spa weather whenever it's good apologies about the internet uh i don't know what to do to be honest right i've got something to show you uh, our little we've got a tiny asda here and there's um a print your own photo booth at the end of the tills so I forgot it was check your own shopping out today. I did 50 quids worth of shopping today. No wonder my shoulders are sore. I know why now. I had to do self-service checkout with a full shop today at the Baby Asda. The reason I'm telling you it's a Baby Asda is because it's got a big secret there. Right down at the end of the tills is a photo booth machine, you know, where you connect your phone up. Well, I've not printed a um, photograph off for four or five years now. And we don't have a printer. And I take a lot of photographs. And I thought, you know what? I'll give it a shot. I think it, I can't remember what it was called now, the machine. Uh, and it said all prints are 49p. Now, I, if you're like me, I'm a videographer. And I have thousands of pictures on my phone and videos. And you used to have to plug your phone in. And then you'd crash the machine because it would be trying to download all your photos. And it was just a disaster. And the last time I got photos printed off, they were fairly poor quality. And I thought, well, that was a waste of time. I'm not going to do that again. So I've got a new iPhone 12 Pro and I thought I'd give it a whirl at getting some of the prints off it. Well, it connected via Bluetooth instantly and I could pick my things. You didn't. Some of them you had to download an app for in the middle of Tesco. You can never get Wi-Fi in Tesco to download an app. So big failure on their behalf there. So I've had issues with photograph machines in the past. Anyway, this thing instantly picked up my phone, instantly highlighted my photos. And then the best thing was, is it said all prints, no matter what size, are 49p. And it said, as I selected my couple of test prints, that um, it's hinted, I don't know what dimensions these are, eight inch by six. It said there was a big arrow pointing, the biggest photos are the best for your iPhone. So we went on a trip trip to Snowdonia the other day and I printed off about five or six photos. Do you know what? Popular astronomers, 
if you've taken some astro pictures, go to your nearest Asda and get them printed off because these are like magazine images. Now, excuse the content. They are fairly erratic because what would you expect from me? But I just wanted to show you. Oh, what's the point of me showing you high quality pictures where my internet is rubbish? Take it from me. These pictures, these photos are massive and glossy and beautiful and have got like magazine quality resolution. Can you see that? That's my little friend Krempog. Uh, out in Snowdonia. I'll hold it really still. I don't know whether you can see how amazing quality that print is, but you can practically see every blade of grass on it. So if you've got a stack, the reason I'm telling you this, popular astronomers, is that if you have got a stack of images, not stacked images, but just a, a heap of images that you've never printed off of beautiful remote nebula and galaxies and planets. Go to your nearest Asda and use their printing machine because that is by far and away the biggest and most beautiful and sharpest picture I've ever had printed off. Good show. You see, Thank you. I don't know that I've got dodgy internet because it looks normal to me. It's you people who are suffering with my pixels. The clouds look great in that photo. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. Um, anyway, friend me on Facebook if you want to make friends. That'd be lovely. Thank you to everybody who contributed. Um, any housekeeping? Any housekeeping? Anything? Right. You've got a couple of minutes to say your goodbyes and um, I'll just scroll through my stuff to see what else. Let's have some plug the mug. Mm. say goodbye i'm going in a minute uh i'm just gonna hang put my head in my hands and wonder what to do next i might have to move the show to mondays and that is just a really terrible thought good night vicky and everyone see you all next week d d it's the double d thank you thank you uh bye everyone we love sonia liam thanks for joining us i know you're in america that is great really good Thank you, Liam. I know I'm beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. Cosmo, Catherine and Sonia. Have a lovely weekend. Yeah, it's going to be nice. We've got a clear sky here. I might go out and do, where's my Steve Tonkin book? My telescope has got an out of order sign on it at the minute. So I've been limited to binocular astronomy. When does the summer Milky Way rise? I need to see Cygnus down the middle of that Milky Way. Um, not into the winter sky because it's got no decent Milky Way in it. <laughs> Great show. Thank you so much. Thanks for the great show. Maybe 6 a.m. next time. Yeah, see you 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, popular astronomers. The internet will be reeb. <laughs> well done, a true broadcaster. Oh, God, thank you. I'm sweating inside there, Robin. I'm sweating inside. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. September. What's happening in September? It's not my birthday then. It's October. <laughs> right. Oh, thank you, everyone. Is Malk watching, my astronomy teacher? I know he's lurking on YouTube somewhere. Maybe Dolly's watching as well from my astronomy class. Maybe Alex and Ben and John Gormley from my little astro group are watching. If so, don't be a stranger. Make some comments next time and join the SPA. It's my job to get members, you see. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And clear skies and apple pies. Cosmo says he loves you. Goodbye.